Hey folks, Tim Miller here. And I, it looks like a lot of things are changing in our country. And I want to talk to you a little bit about flying on an airplane. You know, it wasn't too long ago that flying on an airplane, you didn't even have to think about it. I mean, it was, you know, you had screening, most people were well behaved, but as our country continues to struggle with more and more violence, it's hitting airplanes too. Tonight's shocking new video of a brawl erupting on board a Southwest Airlines flight. This flying as a fight breaks out between two men on this plane before it took off from Dallas to Phoenix Monday. Other passengers attempting to separate the men. This video showing one of the men trying to explain what happened. I'm telling everybody what happened. He approached me aggressively with my family. I don't play with my family. Tell them what happened. Tell them what you did. Witnesses say both men were removed from the plane. It comes after that terrifying mid-air attack, a passenger seen here trying to stab a flight attendant multiple times on a cross-country United flight. After Folks, I got to tell you, um, everything's changing in our country. Everything, everywhere you go, you need to think about kind of what's happening. Why is it happening? That second guy stood up and announced to the plane that he was going to take over the plane, that you, if you ran, he wouldn't kill you. Um, obviously, severely mentally ill. And so it brings a good question. What kinds of things should we think about when we're even flying these days? Uh, I got to tell you, I was recently, we travel a lot. We train folks. And I was recently on a flight. And there was a gentleman um, in front of me, an elderly gentleman, who apparently wasn't moving fast enough for some uh, larger guy behind me. And the guy began to yell and scream and berate this older guy. And you got to ask yourself the question, why are people so angry? But you also have to ask your question, am I prepared to identify what's going on and maybe even try to make a difference. Because I do know this, folks, after 9-11, all of us were very aware that planes were vulnerable and that if enough people worked together, you could stop whatever was happening on that plane uh, to include, you know, with Todd Beamer's interaction, uh, stopping it from flying into either the White House or the Capitol. Uh, unfortunately, it took the plane down. But But here's the good news. We can be alert and aware and prepared to take action if we just really think about an airplane like we would anything else um, that any other place where we would be in terms of what what can we do what what are the things we can be wise and prepared for um, even on an airplane and, and let me suggest to you like I always do now you're on a plane and now you have a fight you know breaking out. Um, and now what do you do? And, and I know I have a lot of folks that respond, Hey, we're older. Um, we don't have the capability to fight. Uh, what should we do? But, but let's start like we always do with the before the during, and then the after part, uh, of, of a situation on an aircraft. And let's start with the before, you know, folks, a lot of people are mindless when they get on planes. I was recently traveling and I noticed that, Almost everybody was on their plane and many had earphones on. And I'm not suggesting that you can't do either. But perhaps, especially when people are boarding or even before the boarding, when you're in the gate area, watch carefully. This is so important. Watch carefully people's demeanor. Because as the, in the case where the guy was trying to stab a flight attendant, he had communicated bizarre behavior before he ever got on the plane. And so the question is, did anybody notice that? Or more importantly, did anybody notice it and let someone else know? Because in that particular case, um, thank God, um, there's a preview to that video where you notice people as he's standing up declaring that he's going to kill everybody on the plane. There's a gentleman that sits in front of him with his hand over his mouth, not moving. There's another behind him, almost paralyzed. 
Thank God there's one man, that big, strong African-American man that stood up and said, you're not doing this. And then he followed him down the aisle and he yelled and screamed and got other passengers involved. And so therefore, this guy was on his way to the cockpit, not that he could have gotten in, but he certainly could have hurt flight attendants on the way. And that's when we as Americans ought to stand up and say, that's not going to happen. We're not going to do that. And so let's talk about it again before when you're in. Uh, the area, the boarding area, please put this away and pay attention to what's going on around you. Watch if there's abnormal behavior. The second or the first situation, the fight, uh, one guy had a lot of alcohol and that's a common thing uh, on a plane. Uh, you know, alcohol has been served. People are waiting to get on the flight. Oftentimes the flight attendants don't know the level of alcohol that they've had. So they're admitted onto the plane and now you got a problem. So beforehand, we want to watch, we want to pay attention. Folks, if you see something or you hear somebody speaking bizarrely, you can, you can very um, subtly go up to the gate person and say, Hey, th this is kind of strange here. Bring it to their attention because guess when we want to stop all that craziness while you're still in the boarding area because you have uniformed police officers and can, can respond immediately. And God forbid, if the person does get violent, there's a lot more open space to deal with. Uh, some of the training I had was, was training called fly and armed. And it was after nine 11, it was teaching law enforcement the tactics of how to, you know, fight terrorism, but also how to deal with violence on the plane. A plane is a very constricted area. It's very difficult uh, because it's so closed up um, to be able to maintain distance and do some of the things that we want ordinarily to do if we're in a tactical situation. So beforehand, we're observant, we're alert. And then when we get on the plane, we're watching because here's another fact. While you're sitting on a plane, by the way, if you can sit on an aisle, please do, because you can make a difference from the aisle. If you're trying to call, crawl over people from a window and you're healthy, you're strong, and you're able to influence the situation, it just makes it much harder. So try to sit in the aisle. If possible, pick a seat as far forward as you can. Remember that a, if someone's going to try um, to interfere with a flight, um, try to take control of a flight, they're going to have to do it um, up front. They're going to try to go for the cockpit. So we want to be as far up as we can and preferably on an aisle as we can. And then the other thing is, folks, look at people that are passing you. Two things you can pick up really quickly if you just watch. Number one is their demeanor. As in the first uh, or the second case with the guy that's mentally ill, he clearly was expressing a crazy level of, of demeanor pretty much the whole time. And then, of course, he stands up, declares he's taken the plane, and that's a problem. The other thing is, so you can watch their demeanor, you can look in their eyes, and then you also can get a, a pretty strong odor of alcohol because you're so close. And if someone's coming on and they're highly intoxicated, Again, that may be something that a flight attendant may want to know. They don't want to wait until they're in the air. Let me tell you, I've, uh, I've helped flight attendants in the past, um, which we'll get to that in the during, but they're very grateful for people um, who are willing to help because they realize some of them have been significantly injured by crazy people on a plane. And uh, so they're very thankful. The other thing is if you're a retired firefighter, or retired law enforcement or retired military, and you're still in good shape. Um, periodically, I have let flight attendants know that I am retired and I'm willing to help them. And let's move into the during. Now you're on the plane and you, you obviously see that they need help. Folks, let, let me give you rule number one. You don't interject yourself unless the flight attendant asks you for assistance. Why is that so important? Because when a flight attendant asks you for assistance, now you're operating in concert with their authority as a flight crew. You know, you can be charged federally for interfering with a flight crew. What you don't want to do is interact or interject yourself into a situation that a flight crew may feel they have under control and now you're making it worse. So should you 
find yourself in a situation on an aircraft, like with the, the two people that are fighting, and you ask the flight attendant, hey, can I help? Um, then if they say yes, then you've got to cross the bridge into what is it exactly that you can do to help. Folks, there's power in numbers. Um, we don't want to be the ones sitting back with our hands over our mouth, almost like I hope nothing happens here. We want to be the people that are prepared. And that's what you hear all the time on this channel. Be ready, be trained, be prepared, be mentally thinking about what is it that I can do? And you may say, well, you know, I'm in my whatever, 70 or 80s, or, or you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure I'm in a position to do anything. Well, maybe you're that person that's so observant, you see him coming onto the plane and you stop the whole thing before it ever happens. So never underestimate your role. Okay, so you're on the plane, something's happening, you do ask the flight attendant, what can you do? Always remember that there's power and strength in numbers. So moving, if if somebody's violent or threatening someone, the ability to tackle them, we learned after 9-11. Uh, the good news about an, an airplane is it's very narrow in terms of aisles. And so uh, w if you get three or four people, you're going to be able to get somebody down on the floor. The flight attendants have restraining devices that they can utilize in concert with you uh, to put people in um, in, in restraints. Um, and then remember that just because they're in restraints doesn't necessarily mean that it's over. So somebody's going to have to maintain a tactical awareness of what this person is doing. Um, and all that, let, let me say it again, it's under the direction of the flight crew. At some point, I will tell you if there's violence on the aircraft, um, the pilots are going to weigh in. They're going to make decisions like, hey, we're going to have to put this bird down. What's the closest airport? We're going to ask for law enforcement to meet. And so remember, if you're going to do it during, if you're going to you're going to be in a position during a flight to engage yourself in an emergency such as a violent emergency like we've seen, then do it under the direction of the flight crew. Use reasonable force only. You, that, that always applies no matter where you are and the sky's on the ground. If you're asked to assist, don't overuse force because you're going to be held accountable for it. And then obviously, uh, once you're on the ground, you, you need to be prepared to uh, take instructions from law enforcement. They're going to, it'll be autopilot once they come on because th this isn't their first rodeo. So before, during, and then after, what do we do? Folks, can I just encourage you, please? So many people nowadays do not want to get involved. They do not want to be a part of what's going on because, A, they're fearing they're going to be canceled. Somebody's got a camera. B, they're just afraid they don't know what to do. C, um, they're only concerned about themselves. And all three of those things, I understand. But let me say this. As we watch <laughs> these incidents happening more and more, it's not going to help our country if good people don't wisely and with preparation stand to confront some of the stuff going on. And, uh, oh, by the way, it may not necessarily be a violent incident. It may very well be a medical incident. I was flying to a training last week, as a matter of fact, and I was doing what I said. I was sitting up front on an aisle, and I noticed that um, there was a lot of commotion around the forward bathroom. And I, I noticed kind of a little bit of a, of a panic with flight attendants. And fortunately, there was a big, uh, strong male flight attendant up front. And he eventually, you know, manually opened the lavatory door and a very large um, elderly man fell out. Obviously, he was having a medical emergency and the, the flight attendant could not get him up. And so I did what I, I'm telling you to do. I, I looked at the flight attendants initially. I said, do you need help? One of the ladies said, no, we got it. Great. And then very quickly, she looked at me and said, can you come help? And so I did. We helped get the man. Fortunately, it wasn't um, a medical emergency in terms of life threatening. He, he was having some issues with medication and other things. But the point is, um, you know, that's another area where we can be helpful, wise and prepared. Folks, the goal of this channel is very simple. I always hope 
and I pray that we're equipping you with good information that should you need it will be very, very helpful because you're not going to have to try to figure it out at the time. You're going to have had some training, which is why we do what we do. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, remember the before, during, and the after. Um, ask yourself, if I was there on that plane, what would I do beforehand? Would I notice that these two were starting to argue even while they were on the, you know, getting on the plane or uh, the one guy was obviously upset because he said, hey, you're making aggressive moves to towards my family. All of us understand that. All of us get that. And folks, unfortunately, with the challenges we're having with, with drug abuse and mental health and just all these issues, they are manifesting themselves on planes. So I hope this is helpful. Hey, I need your help, please. Uh, many are unsubscribed from my channel. And I, I, I know it's not getting the visibility. Again, conservative channels across YouTube are having these problems. So if you would, please like, share, subscribe, comment to me. Let me know uh, so that we can keep producing these videos. I hope they're helpful to you. Uh, we're going to be doing a bunch more here shortly because um, I've finally gotten a little bit of break from actually training hands-on. Uh, we did some um, some weapons training at, at Maple Fork Lodge. It was awesome. Um, we've done a lot of hands-on training, actually, for corporations in terms of crisis preparation and response because people are like, hey, stuff's happening more and more. We need to know how to do it, not just a plan that that you know is written out we need to know and that's kind of where we come in so i hope this is helpful for you i hope and pray that you're staying safe out there because it is getting a little bit challenging but at the end of the day um i, I know that working together uh we can make a difference and that's my hope and prayer so stay safe out there god bless you we'll see you next time